Please watch the video in high quality. In this video, we will learn how to read 3D model data from a text file and load it at runtime in Unity, like so. So previously, I've made a video on how to save mesh or model to a text file at runtime in Unity, and I'll put uh, the link into the description of this video and in this video we will learn how to read the mesh data or 3d model from that text file to start i will create a, a new button by duplicating the button i already have uh, by pressing ctrl and d and i will change its name to mesh open button and then just drag it down to uh, minus 75 on the y-axis and then we'll change its text to open mesh and then uh, in the script uh, folder i'll create a new script C sharp script and we'll call it open mesh. And uh, just before we start, I'll open the uh, save mesh uh, script that we created in the previous video that's linked into the description. And I'll just comment out the, the part when we have the model data or mesh data into the script so that it doesn't show and we need to read it from scratch. I'll save that. Okay, so now in the editor, uh, that's, this is the new script. I'll just drag it into the game object, save mesh game object, so it's attached to it. And just click on the game object to make sure that the new script is there. Then I'll double click on the new script to open it. So the previous video in the description uh, will have a result of saving a mesh data into a file like that. And the current video will show us how to read the, those data from this file and load them, the 3D model mesh data, into uh, Unity. Okay, so this is the open mesh script. Uh, I will just uh, add the, the following code into it and I'll go through it line by line. So, or a block by block. So first we will need uh, to uh, import the, uh, uh, the namespace system.io so that we could use the uh, file class and its uh, methods over here. And uh, then uh, we have a public uh, game object model uh, variable and that uh, game object or model we use it later to attach the mesh data and uh, as uh, and the, any other models uh, uh, as children. Uh, we don't need the start and update method, so I commented them out. And we'll have a few uh, methods we define here that we gonna use to read the data. So the first method would be um, string to vector three array, which it's uh, it's read a string and uh, uh, convert it to array of vector three. And what it needs, so the, the string from the file would be in this format, like a vector three x, y, and z, space between them, and then v and vertical bar, and then the next vertex. So it's just gonna go through them and read them. And the v and vertical bar are as was known as uh, the split string, so that we it's just a way when we save the file so we know it's split or differentiate between or yeah it's just a, 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 a separation between each vertex uh, okay so first it's define a string array and get uh, and split this past string using the split string so 
uh, it it make an array of uh, strings, and that those array are split by uh, in this case the v uh, bar uh, vertical bar, which are the split string. So the array would have this as first element, this as second element, third element, and so on and so forth. And then it will loop through the string of array and change each string in that array uh, by splitting it based on the space because there are spaces between them. And uh, then uh, uh, so it, it has another string array by splitting based on the spaces. And then uh, if the length doesn't equal a three, because it's we expecting X and Y and Z, then it will throw an error debug. And otherwise it will get uh, 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 the, the result, uh, which is vector uh, three array uh, and will populate it by creating a new vector three and then uh, parse the strings into floats for for each x y and z making vector three because here we define the size of or the length of the vector three array so here we just populating or assigning a value for each of its item based on the i iterator so in brief it's take a string and turn it into array of vector three. Similarly, uh, the second uh, method is take uh, a string and turn it of integer array of or array of integers. Similarly, it defined uh, uh, integer. Uh, it, it defined array of strings, and uh, by splitting the best. A string based on the spaces. So the best string is integer and space, integer and space. So it's used the space as a splitter, and each of this uh, integer will be item of an array. And then it loops through the items and it will populate the result of each item of the integer array by parsing the string into integer. Uh, the third method is converting a string to a color. So it's the string is bas R R G B A values with the spaces between them, and similarly, it's check and and pass through them and return a color a type variable uh, uh, from the string. Now we define a late uh, after that a public uh, method on click open and later we will assign it to the button so when a user click a button this method is get called and uh, from here it gets the uh, string uh, path of the uh, file and in this case we have a default file path we get through application persistent data path and we know from the previous uh, video in the description that we named the file model the DA lab and uh, this is just a, a, a default um, location we chose for this video but if you are into opening and saving file using native standalone file browser at one time as what happened in, def in, in normal applications or load the models at one time I will put uh, videos in the uh, link to videos in the description uh, which explain how to do that but for to, to keep it simple in this video we'll just have a default location where we save or in this case we open the uh, data from and here we just gonna debug the uh, location of that file so you could see where is it saved by default in your system and then it will check if the file exists using the file class and exist exist methods and then if it is, then that model, just in case it has some, sorry, that model we define, if it already has some data read into it, we uh, just gonna, um, uh, where is it? 
Yeah, here it is. So if it's there, we're just gonna loop through its children and destroy them. So we have a clear empty model to start with. And then we have the model, uh, assign it to using the string to model method. And we pass to that method, which is we're gonna go through here. This is the method, we're gonna go through it, what it does. And we pass to this method, the content of the, uh, uh, the, the path or the file we, we have here as a text and we do that using the file class dot read all text and then the splitter in this case as we have in the previous video it was mo and vertical uh, bar okay so the the method the next method is string to model which it gets the a string and gets the and uh, the split string as parameter and it is in this case I'm all, uh, vertical bar as we defined in the previous video and so what it does first is create a game object it's call it model or you could call it it, it, it might be confu confu confusing in this case because it's similar to the game object here so we could call it anything I uh, could just change it to result model and I'll just change all the model variable here to the same thing so this one here this one here and this one here yeah that should be good okay so it's create a game so just that we don't confuse the two names of this model and this one this is just uh, a local variable in this case so uh, this one so okay we created a game object it's called result model it's uh, assign it in, as a new game object and then we get the uh, the array of strings from this string and we using the split string passed through to split the string into array and then we gonna go uh, iterate through these uh, strings array and then uh, um, we uh, assign the result game object uh, 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 we created a new game object uh, we call it result uh, obj and uh, to which we assign uh, uh, the uh, the uh, game object that has the mesh in, into it and to do that we uh, call the string to game object mesh method here we're gonna go through it and what it does but what we do is uh, pass to it the, uh, the, 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 the 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 string and the split string in this case m vertical bar and then uh, the result object uh, in this case um, you may not, not need that I'm just transforming uh, no sorry we do need that so this result object gonna be a child of the result model we have it here so we do that by uh, calling the result object here dot transfer don't, don't parent so we can assign a parent to it which would be this result model dot transform so we making it as a parent so in in short this is a game object that has children game object each of these children game object has mesh attached to it and then we gonna go through the result model over here which is the parent we change it to transform to local scale so this is this this uh, may not be needed so see how your model would be shown if it has uh, in my case it's i find that if i reverse the scale on the x uh, but uh, x is on the x to minus one it the mod my models will look right but maybe in your case you don't need it so you could just comment this out if not needed and then it will return the result model the last method it's take a string and return a game object that has mesh attached to it so we pass a string to it and the splitter 
and which is in this case the M and the vertical bar. So what happens at the first it's define a local game object variable. It's called mesh obj and then a mesh we call the result mesh and then uh, it changed the mesh index format to 32 just in case it's a big uh, mesh that has an, a large number of vertices and then it's defined a color uh, call it uh, variables call it result color and then uh, they it, it split the passed in um, uh, string into array of string based on the splitter string that is passed here which is um, uh, vertical bar and then it's check if the length of the uh, string array because we're expecting six parts uh, the vertices the normals the triangles the indices the mesh topology and the colors if it's not six so it will debug an error message else it will uh, then uh, get the result vertices vector three utilizing the method we have uh, uh, gone through uh, before which is string to vector three uh, array this one and then similarly it will get the result normals and then the result triangles using the string to integer array we talked about it here and then using the color method to get the uh, the result uh, uh, the result color and then it, it use also the uh, uh, string to integer array to get the indices and then it just gonna read it through the string uh, the as a string the mesh to topology uh, as a string uh, and then it now it will assign the vertices of the result mesh we define here as uh, uh, using the result vertices we read here from the uh, so it will assign the vertices we read from the string into the new mesh mesh and then the normal similarly will assign and the triangles and then it will get uh, it will check the uh, uh, mesh uh, turbo string over here if it's if it's read as lines that means that because uh, we have the options when we save the mesh just in case uh, the topology was saved as lines or triangles or something else so in my case I'm just checking for lines or triangles but you could add other conditions for other topologies so if it's line We'll get the result mesh here and set its indices using the result indices over here. And we set the mesh topologies to line and the zero for the uh, the uh, uh, the index position. Uh, and then otherwise, I'm just going to make the topology as triangles. And then we have the mesh uh, OBJ here. We have a local game object and we add its component mesh filter. So we could assign the uh, mesh to it. And then we add another component mesh renderer. So we could uh, access its materials and color. And so, yeah, here we get the mesh, assign the result mesh over here that we assign its, its components. And then the, we get through the mesh object and the uh, material and its color and assign the result color that we read from the string over here and then we return the mesh obj so if we save and go back to the uh, unity editor so in the editor i'll just make sure to open the uh, new button and uh, change its uh, just make sure because that open mesh is attached to this game object so I'll just make sure to drag it here which is already here and I'll call the open mesh uh, script here and then call on click open uh, method which we uh, had over where is it this this one over here okay so and so uh, it, it's here now if I click play nothing will show but and we uh, as we talk we have a file here in that uh, define a location so if I click open it will read that file and load the data here and it will output as well the, lo the file location uh, for us uh, so we could get it from here
okay so this is how you could read mesh file uh, sorry mesh data from text file at one time in unity thank you please like subscribe and click the notifications button to help me make more videos like this